Hello, today we're going to talk about energy transfers in systems. But before we do that, I think it's very important that we investigate or think about this idea of energy, which has is which is now slightly different to how we used to think of it before. So before we talk about types or forms of energy, and we talked about sound and heat, light energy, electrical potential, which we divided into gravitational potential, chemical and elastic potential energies. And we also mentioned nuclear energy and kinetic energy. We talked about them in terms of they were types or forms, but that's a little bit misleading because that's not the reality of it. There aren't actually different forms of energy. Energy is basically energy. And what we refer to now is energy stores. So some of them are kinetic energy, this energy associated with movement. We've got gravitational potential. We've looked at that before, and that's energy gained by increasing height. We've got elastic potential energy associated with springy or elastic objects thermal energy or sometimes called heat energy and this is because of an object's temperature and chemical energy in food in fuels in chemicals in a battery technically a battery singular is a cell in physics but these are the ones that we commonly deal with in GCSE physics you may have heard of others like magnetic energy due to magnets being close to each other or even nuclear and in terms of talking about energy changing from one form to another we must be very careful and talk about energy transfers so energy can be transferred from one store to another store, but we don't talk about it being changed or transformed. So, for example, if we've got the, a kinetic energy store in a car, we can slow that car down by applying the brakes. So the car would slow down eventually to a stop. And what would happen is we would have brake pads rubbing against uh, the wheels, rubbing inside the wheels. We'd get friction and that would be transferred the kinetic energy store will be transferred to a thermal energy store. And in fact, that would be then dissipated or spread to the environment. But the key thing is we talk about that as an energy transfer from one store to another. The other question you may have is actually then what happened to light energy, electrical energy and sound energy, which is what we used to talk about before. But these are actually not thought about as energy stores. These A better way to describe these or understand these is that they are energy carriers. So, for example, electrical energy, sorry, electricity, electricity can carry energy into a system where it can be uh, then made to do something useful. So let's have a look at what sort of things can happen when energy is carried into a system. So imagine we've got some sort of system here, energy may be being carried in by electricity one of the things that can happen is that energy could be transferred to an energy store it could also be transferred usefully so do something that's useful for us it could also be what we call dissipated and it could be dissipated I've done three arrows there because it's dissipated means spread but it could be spread to the surroundings and that's pretty much usually as heat eventually or at least eventually as heat so these are the three kind of things we talk about happening when we have a system of energy transfers stored energy just to give an example could be something for example in a battery a useful transferred energy could be movement and when we talk about dissipation or energy being dissipated that's spread to the environment or the surroundings and that pretty much ends up as heat in this something being heated in the surroundings okay let's actually make that a little bit more easy to understand a little bit more concrete if we take the example of a car we've got some energy transfers happening with our car we could at one end talk about the energy stored in the fuel so there's an energy store in the fuel and that's chemical potential energy and that could be transferred usefully in a variety of ways and the first one and the most obvious one would be as a kinetic energy store. So when the car is accelerating, we have the chemical energy in the fuel being transferred to a kinetic energy store due to movement. We could have light, but remember light is not an energy store. That would eventually carry the energy to an object, which in fact would end up being heated by a very, very tiny amount. But in fact, that's the energy transfer that happens. We also have heat. The engine generates heat because of the friction of the moving parts. 
and that is often spread to the environment. And one last one is we have sound, which eventually would hit objects and heat up those objects. So again, we're ending up with a thermal or heat energy store. So in a way, we could describe what we just talked about as a system. And what we want to do next is imagine if we could somehow close off this system so that it is self-contained. What we could do is close it off like this so that no energy goes in and out, and we call it a closed system. Now, in reality, it's very difficult to make a closed system, but imagine we had a closed system where no energy could be could go in or no energy could come out. And that will help us understand a very important science or physics rule. And that is that in a closed system, there is no change or no net change in the total energy in that system. No net change in the total energy. So if we were to add up the energy and we could give energy a value in joules, if we were to count up the joules of energy in that system, even though we've got energy transfers and pretty much all eventually going to heat, even though we've got energy transfers, the total energy would not change, even though it would be transferred to different stores. And this is to do with a very important physics law, and that is the fact that energy cannot be created or destroyed. We can't just magic up energy from somewhere and we can't make it disappear. And it's worth highlighting that in a fancy way because it's so important. So there we have it, some important ideas about how we talk about energy now and how it's slightly different to how we used to talk about it. And all this is going to be quite important for your GCSE physics or GCSE science. So thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon.